Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth Sunday of Lent. I'm coming to you this afternoon from the safe confines of my home where I'm practicing sheltering and uh, keeping some social distance uh, in observation of our quarantine requests. And so I uh, wanted to share with you a few reflections on some of the readings for this weekend and invite you into prayer during this time since we're not able to gather at our church together in our typical worship style as uh, the body of Christ, but we come together in the power of the word and uh, invite God's spirit into our midst. And so I would invite you to pray with me as we use the opening prayer of our liturgy for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so this fifth Sunday, we're invited to hear from Ezekiel and from the Gospel of John, uh, two powerful readings that uh, really play on this word ruach that we heard in that opening prayer as breath, uh, but we also know it as wind and as spirit. It's the same Hebrew word, ruach, that which moved over the chaos in creation to create the world, to create all that there is. And so we hear stories at this point in our Lenten journey that talk to us about recreation. And we're going to reflect on that a little bit. Uh, let's hear first this story of from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord said to these bones. I will make breath enter you. And you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make fresh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy to them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You know, right before I uh, was reading this part from Ezekiel earlier, I had read an update 
from Matt McQuillan about uh, Maggie McQuillan. She's in surgery right now, the 18-year-old, the high school senior from Anamosa who was in a tragic car accident last week and uh, is undergoing extensive surgery today. And in the update, I was, I was amazed to read that an EMT or a, a group of EMTs had performed CPR on Maggie for 18 minutes. And I was just imagining them at that scene, forcing the breath of life into her. Those compressions that forced air, wind, breath, life into her body. How desperately they worked to keep that breath moving through her body that she might have life. And I, I found myself imagining, you know, that was, that was one person. And here we have in this story, Ezekiel, who is led out to this valley. It's a, it's a dream. It's an image where the Lord takes him out and shows him his people, the people of Israel, whose hope has lost to them. They, they're in exile. They're separated from their homeland. They wonder, where's their God? They no longer feel that life energy flowing through them. And Ezekiel sees the dry bones, the disconnection, the death that is surrounding him. And he knows that this isn't God's desire. He knows that this is not their destiny as a people. But their faith in God has wavered and doubt has taken over. But God prophesies through Ezekiel, first to the bones, you will have life. And then prophesies to that very breath, to that ruach, asking it to come and fill those, those bones, bringing them back together again, uniting them, recreating them into the people that they once were. This is an event that involves a whole nation of people. And you know, it... It doesn't escape me that this so much sounds like what we're tempted to sit with today in the midst of this pandemic when we're asked to isolate, separate, to be quarantined from each other, that we can start to lose hope and find ourselves slipping into despair. But if we ask, if we pray, if we open ourselves up to that breath of God, we are recreated, we renewed. And not individually alone, but as a nation. You know, I just have a hard time believing that we aren't going to come out of this a stronger people, possibly appreciating relationships a little bit more, simplifying a little bit more, finding ourselves relying on each other a little bit more. That is some of what brought Israel back together some of the fulfillment that God had promised them. And they came to know the intimacy of their God even more intensely. And so our gospel this week 